The history of supportive breathing by mechanical means dates back to the beginning of the 20th century. In the earliest successful ventilators, lung inflation was a result of negative pressure applied to the body. A version of this type of therapy still exists in the form of biphasic cross ventilation, or BCV. The negative pressure against the chest and abdomen can be used continuously or in cycle with a positive phase to create improvements in gas exchange in many elements of cardiopulmonary function. In this much refined version of negative pressure ventilation only available with the Hayek RTX ventilator, a chest shell or cuirass is placed over the patient's chest and abdomen and the pressure in the cuirass controlled. BCV can serve as non-invasive ventilation, a lung recruitment tool, and a means of airway clearance and cough support. Many peer-reviewed medical publications support BCV use. Our focus today is pediatric. Many papers have been published related to BCV use in pediatric respiratory care. We would like to share some brief excerpts from three papers. In the first two, efficacy of BCV in the pediatric ICU is demonstrated with mixed respiratory failure patients. The other paper we will look at sheds light on the potential of BCV for patients with chronic care and support needs of spinal muscle atrophy, or SMA, and other forms of respiratory-related neuromuscular compromise. The first pair of papers published in Respiratory Care Journal, the first in December of 17, negative pressure ventilation in pediatric acute respiratory failure, and the other found in the January of 2020 issue of the same journal, predictors of negative pressure ventilation response in pediatric acute respiratory failure. These two papers cover the results of the use of BCV by a group associated with Buffalo University and Oishai Children's Hospital as their primary form of non-invasive ventilation on 351 patients between the two papers. Their findings included the following from the 2017 paper. The majority were MPV responders, defined as not needing escalation to any form of positive pressure ventilation. Complications from MPV were rare. The annual percentage of pediatric ICU admissions requiring intubation declined by 28% in the three years after MPV introduction, compared with the three years prior. Negative pressure ventilation, applied by an iron lung, was the first mode of mechanical ventilation created to support respiratory failure due to poliovirus. It fell out of favor because of its cumbersome nature and its detrimental hemodynamic effects on venous return from the abdomen. Mechanical ventilation delivering a positive pressure via the airway circumvented these issues and became the standard of care. Over time, as the morbidities associated with invasive positive pressure ventilation were discovered, negative pressure technology was re-explored. In general, MPV was started after subjects had ongoing distress, hypoxia, or hypercapnia, despite maximal flows on high-flow nasal cannula. MPV is a non-invasive respiratory support for children with acute respiratory failure from varying etiologies that has few complications and a 70% response rate in a general pediatric population. From the 2020 paper. Majority of subjects stabilized with negative pressure ventilation and did not need a change of respiratory support. Oxygen requirement was lower in subjects who were responsive to negative pressure ventilation within one hour of initiation. Early studies found that the biphasic cuirass ventilator decreased FiO2 requirements and increased PCO2 clearance within hours, and its use was associated with lower likelihood of intubation in small pediatric populations. In the largest pediatric negative pressure ventilation study to date, 70% of 233 critically ill subjects treated with a biphasic cuirass ventilator in a single pediatric ICU had resolution of acute respiratory failure with negative pressure ventilation and a 3% complication rate. If negative pressure ventilation can improve lung function through recruitment, then gas exchange in the form of SpO2, FiO2, and PCO2 should improve. Our data, like others, indicate that this happens within one hour of initiation of support. Negative pressure ventilation successfully supported 69% of pediatric subjects with all-cause acute respiratory failure with a complication rate less than 2%. Oxygen requirement was lower in subjects who were responsive to negative pressure ventilation within one hour of initiation. Dr. James Harris is credentialed as both a pediatric and adult critical care practitioner. He has worked with BCV in Buffalo since early in his career. In a recent recorded presentation, he describes some of his experiences using BCV. So, so to, to summarize, uh, with regarding pediatrics, we're using it for RSV bronchiolitis, our SMA population, 6 to 5 brosis, uh, mus 
uh, our muscular dystrophy, acute disease situations. Uh, and then what's very interesting is in rescue situ situations. So I've, I've got uh, my, uh, and actually an old photo, I was actually a first year attending uh, with this patient. And I have my little uh, hip, black HIPAA circle uh, in, in place to cover up this, uh, this little patient. This little patient uh, actually had uh, staph pneumonia, necrotizing pneumonia, uh, chest tubes bilaterally, was not an ECMO candidate um, at that time, uh, and just continued to have persistent bronchopulmonary fistula. So what we ended up doing was like, okay, how can we uh, allow these bronchopulmonary fistulas to heal to be able to eventually get them to extubate. You know, so unstable, we can't get, couldn't get this patient to an ECMO center either. So as you can see, we, we had uh, our maquette servo eye along with a Benel jet and the RTX together. What we were able to do is we were able to ventilate this patient, excuse me, oxygenate this patient with uh, very low mean airway pressures to allow bronchopulmonary fistula to heal themselves. And at that point, the patient was able to, uh, to be extubated. And in fact, six months later, I was in the gift shop and there's this little, little kid running around annoying me. I'm embarrassed. He was actually annoying me. And I looked down, it's like, oh my gosh, that was our patient. You know, so he was actually uh, in the hospital in the gift shop after his follow-up with, uh, with surgery. So it was, a, it was quite successful. So um, post-extubation transition period um, as well in the pediatric uh, period, and then also uh, Fontan patients. So, which is very, uh, as those people who are in, uh, in pediatrics and now uh, also in adults, we're not, we're not exactly sure how long these patients are gonna live for. They continue to live, they're doing great. They have a single ventricle and they are, they're only perfusing their lungs uh, with passive, uh, uh, with, with, with passive flow. So if you intubate this patient and, and apply any serious amount of venary pressure, they die on you instantly because they have no venous return. So it's, it's one of those uh, treatment modalities that I, I feel we're gonna be using more and more in our uh, survivors of Fontan uh, physiology uh, when uh, ECMO is, is not uh, indicated. From these very compelling papers and Dr. Harris' case description on use in the ICU, we go to a paper published in Acta Anesthesiologica Italica, or Anesthesia and Intensive Care in Italy, in 2004, based on Dr. C. Spada's experience and observations and recommendations with a group of SMA patients in their care using the RTX published before BCV was introduced in the U.S. Some excerpts from this paper. Among the things currently on the market in Italy, the RTX respirator differs completely from any existing ones because it combines the characteristics of a non-invasive ventilator, suitable to carry out all the most recent mode of treatment provided by equipment for the removal of endotracheal secretions and which are indispensable instruments of physiotherapy and continuous respiratory gymnastics. The RTX respirator is a biphasic external ventilator that alternately applies positive and negative pressures outside the chest using a cuirass. Early intervention in situations of progressive respiratory failure, such as in patients suffering from neuromuscular pathologies, can make it possible to avoid intubation and artificial ventilation in patients whose chances of detachment from mechanical support are reduced, with considerable saving on hospitalization costs and a better quality of life. In patients who underwent prolonged treatment with the RTX ventilator, an improvement in the structure of the thoracic cage was noted with an increase in the expansion of the apices and a reduction in the typical bell-shaped attitude. Probably the apparatus is of particular importance for the prevention of high-grade kyphoscoliosis, to which many ventilated patients are subjected for chronic pathologies, which considerably complicates the therapeutic process. There have been many compelling testimonials regarding the many uses of BCV. Let's take a moment and learn why we say BCV is mom-approved. My son was diagnosed with congenital central hypoventilation syndrome around a month old. Without BCV, my son would have needed a tracheostomy to keep him alive. And I'm forever grateful that I he was able to use BCV instead. Thank you. Our hospital has used BCV twice for our daughter at age two and six. Now we use BCV to wean from long intubation periods and avoid tracheostomy. Our girl has muscular dystrophy. Not only have we seen BCV work twice, we truly believe in it. Charlotte has active one myopathy. 
She requires ventilation breaks in the daytime and all night long. BCV is helping her to have enough breath to speak and eat. The Hayek RTX is a clinical tool that can make a big difference for your patients from ER to ICU to home. The Hayek RTX ventilator in ICU is credited with decreasing intubations by 28% and with a 70% success rate for treating acute respiratory failure and changing the clinical landscape as far as care for respiratory failure is concerned following introduction. Physiologically, a more natural way to ventilate, no mask required, patient can eat, drink, and speak during support if capable. In long-term care, pediatric use, the Hayek RTX ventilator at BCV is credited with considerable savings on hospitalization costs and a better quality of life. An improvement in the structure of the thoracic cage was noted with an increase in the expansion of the apices and a reduction in the typical bell-shaped attitude in these patients. Also, the prevention of high-grade kyphoscoliosis is considered a potential. The high RTX and BCV, a better way to ventilate.